This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best place to build and host your own website. So today we're going to do an actual tutorial for once. We're going to make this smartphone that's got a working screen. You can turn on the phone, you can launch an app like Twitter, scroll through the timeline, you can close that down, open up Google Maps, you can move around the map, you can zoom in, you can basically replicate any phone behavior with this technique. So in the first part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model and texture the phone. Then in the second part, we're going to make this working screen. For photo references, I really like this great website called dimensions.com. They've got plans for pretty much any phone on the market. I'm going to use the Google Pixel 2 XL, but you should be able to use these techniques to model basically any phone. By default, the image that it gives you will be an SVG file. You can import these into Blender, but it is a little bit weird, so I suggest that you use SVG to PNG.com to just convert that into a PNG image. Then you can just drag this reference image into Blender and move it back a little bit on the Y axis just to give us some room. Next, we're gonna add a plane into the scene and we're gonna press X90, enter. That'll flip it towards us. In edit mode, we're gonna scale that down so it roughly matches the width of the phone. And then we're gonna move and scale the reference image around until everything basically lines up. Go into edit mode on the plane and drag the top and bottom edges so they align with the dimensions of the phone. So the corners need to be curved off. So what we're gonna do is press one to go into vertex mode. We're gonna select everything with A. Then we're gonna use shift control and B to add some bevel. We're not going to be using any subdivision modifiers today, so we're going to make sure everything's nice and smooth here by using 8 to 10 verts. You can add more verts just by scrolling up with the mouse wheel. Next, we're going to go back into object mode. We're going to grab the reference image. We're going to press Shift D to duplicate it. Then we're going to press R, Z, minus 90, then Enter, and that's going to rotate it minus 90 on the Z axis. We can go into side view now by pressing three on the numpad and we can align this plane until the reference image lines up with the front of the phone we just made. So select the phone, go into edit mode, press A to select everything and then press E to extrude. Move this extrusion back until it matches the reference image for where the back of the phone should be. To add a little bit of curve to the back of the phone, with that face still selected at the back, press Ctrl and B, and then move your mouse until you find a nice curve that matches the reference image with the bevel tool. Press 3 for face select mode, click the front face and press I to inset. Drag in a little bit until the lines line up with the glass screen. Press E to extrude this face out just slightly. Then we need to curve off this edge, so press 2 to go into edge selection mode, hold down shift and click one of the edges to select the whole rim. Use Ctrl and B just to bevel that edge a little bit. Do the same thing for the other edge around the front of the phone. In object mode, right click on the phone and select shade smooth. Then in the object properties panel, which has the little green icon on the right, Go to the normals drop down and select auto smooth. On the front of the phone here we have some pieces that we need to cut out like the camera and the speaker. In order to do that we're going to use a boolean which is a way that we can cut one object out of another object. So create a cylinder, scale it down, move it into place so that it lines up with where you want the camera to be, overlapping the mesh slightly so that the cylinder is kind of stuck into the phone. The easiest way to make a boolean is to enable an add-on that comes with Blender called the Bool Tool. You just select the cutter object, hold down shift, select the phone, and then press Ctrl and minus, and the Bool Tool will automatically cut the cutter object out of the other object. Then you can just apply the Bool Tool and delete the cutter object. Now we've got this sort of circle shape cut out, I'm just gonna go back into edit mode on the phone. I'm gonna select the new faces that's just been made, and I'm gonna delete those. Then I'm going to select this ring of verts around the side and I'm going to press F to fill that face back in. Now we've got a circular face cut out there though we'll be able to apply a new material for the camera lens later. Make a cut out for the speakers in basically the same way. The only difference here is that I'm going to take a cylinder and cut it in half, apply a mirror modifier to that cylinder with clipping enabled and if you grab the cylinder and you move it along on the X axis you're going to get something that looks like the cut out shape of the speaker. So now that we've been cutting all these shapes into our mesh, we're definitely gonna have some weird shading issues. We can fix these really easy by going to the modifier panel and finding the weighted normal modifier. 
This is a nice little tool, I always say it works like magic. You just apply it, play around with the settings a little bit, and eventually you'll get some really nice shading. You're probably going to have to enable this setting called Keep Sharp. Don't apply this modifier because we're going to be cutting more stuff into the phone later, so just leave it active in the modifier stack. The buttons on the side of the phone are incredibly simple, just make a cube and in edit mode scale it down until it matches basically the size of the buttons. And then select everything with A and use Ctrl and B just to bevel off all the edges. The back cover on this phone has a little plastic trim around the top. We can make that quite easily but we can't use a loop cut to make it because it won't go through the end gun on the back face. So we're going to use another tool called Bisect instead. Select the whole mesh with A and then press F3 to search. Search for bisect and then now you should be able to cut a line that will go all the way through the mesh. That line might be a little bit wonky so press S, Z, 0 and enter and that will scale it on the 0 to flatten it all out. The bottom of this plastic piece is curved so to make that curve I'm just going to go into the side view wireframe mode. I'm going to grab some of those verts and just slide them up until you get a nice gentle curve around the bottom. Obviously because this is supposed to be a separate piece of plastic we want to add a little seam going around the edge. So I'm going to select all the way around this edge here and around the whole perimeter and I'm going to use Ctrl and B just to bevel a little bit. Then I'm going to push that bevel in slightly with extrude. So I'm going to use Alt and E then extrude along normals. Just push in slightly and you'll have a nice little seam that goes around. We're going to make the cutout sections for the fingerprint scanner and the cameras exactly like we did on the front of the phone. We're just going to use the build tool and a couple of cylinders. Before you apply the build tool, make sure that you grab it and you move it up in the modifier stack so that the weighted normal modifier is always last. Then you can just apply the build tool like normal. The materials for this really couldn't be easier. I'm not even going to walk you through it, I'm just going to put the settings on screen right now. If you've made it this far, I assume you probably know how to apply a material to an individual face of a mesh. If you don't, you just select the faces, select the material you want to apply and click assign. To make your life easier when you're assigning faces for the phone, you can press C and that'll enter circle select mode. Then you can just drag the cursor over the faces you want to select. If you want to remove some faces from the selection, you can hold down shift and just basically erase the selection. You can also hold down control and number pad plus or minus and that'll either grow the selection that you have or it'll shrink it. To make the camera lenses, well that's actually really easy. You just apply a transparent material, a glass like material to the circular cutout that you made. And then behind that you make a sphere and you kind of squash it down so it's a bit like a pancake. And just place that right behind the lens, give that a glass material as well. If you've done all that right, you should have a nice little realistic model of a phone. Before we move on to the animated screen effect, I just want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor for making this video possible. Squarespace is a place where you can build beautiful, professional looking websites without any of the hassle or website building experience that you'd normally need. If you watch my last video where I recreate a scene from the Terminator, you'll know that I've recently been using Squarespace myself to build a decoded website. One thing that I really like about Squarespace is the flexibility of the platform. It comes with a bunch of optional extensions that you can use to add extra functionality to your own website. For instance, let's say you're building a portfolio website to showcase your artwork and you decide that you want to start selling prints. Well, with Squarespace, you can just install an extension and that'll add on-demand print services right to your website. Check out the link in the description or go to squarespace.com forward slash decoder to start your free trial. Use the offer code decoder to save 10% on your first website or domain name. So now we've got the phone set up, how do we make the interactive screen? The first thing we need to do is select all the faces of the screen, go into front view with number pad 1, press U and project from view. That's going to project the faces of the screen under the UV editor. Then in the UV editor just select everything and scale it round until it basically fills the UV space. Try to keep the UV island in the centre of the screen if you can, it will make your life a little bit easier later on, although it's not the end of the world if it moves. Navigate to the drop down menu at the top called UV and select export UV layout. Save it as phone UV or something like that as a PNG file. Before we make the actual screen itself, we can add a really nice little touch here just by adding some smudges. 
You can find smudge and dirt images like this pretty easily online. I'll link a few in the description. So you're just going to want to get one of these and move it into your shader editor for the screen material. You can move the image around using a mapping node. If you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, it comes with Blender, you just need to turn it on. You can press Ctrl and T with the image selected and it'll automatically add the mapping node for you. Then you can just play around with the location until you're happy with where the smudges line up on the screen. Once you've found a good location for the smudges, you can plug the image into the roughness of the screen material. The black parts will be really shiny and the white parts will look like smudges. If the effect isn't visible enough, you can pass the image through a math node before it goes into the roughness. Just set that to multiply and increase the number a little bit, though I'd recommend that you go steady on this and use lower values. Now we can start working on the interactive screen itself. To do this, we'll have to move the UV layout we exported to some sort of image editing program. You can use Photoshop, but recently I've been using this free website called photop.com. It's basically a browser based copy of Photoshop, it's free and you don't even have to make an account or anything. Import the UV layout into whatever your editor of choice is though and create a rectangle tool which matches the part of the glass that actually lights up. In the properties panel I'm going to add a bevel to this just to round it off a little bit. 100 pixels is obviously too much so I'm going to use 35 pixels instead. Right click on the rectangle layer, choose select pixels. Then go to the selection tool so we can right click again and invert the selection. Use the paint bucket tool just to fill in all the part around the rectangle we made. Then invert the selection once more and press delete. Now if we hide the UV layout layer, we've got this cutout shape which basically matches the shape that we want the actual lit up area of the phone to be. Export this as a PNG image and call it frame. So you might be wondering why we had to do all that. Well, if you get a screenshot of a phone background and you connect it straight up to the emission color slot, you'll notice we have two problems. Number one, the image is stretched. Number two, the image goes right to the edge of the glass, where if you look at a real smartphone, you always have a little bezel around the side where it's just black. So grab the image of the frame that you've just made and move it into the shader editor. Add a mix RGB node into the scene and connect the frame image to the bottom slot. Connect the background screenshot to the top slot. For the factor, use the alpha output of the frame image and connect that up to the factor of the mix RGB. We can turn the display on and off just by altering the brightness of the emission strength. So now we have the bezel around the phone and we have a working screen, but we still have the stretching issue. There's two ways that can fix that. Number one, we can just use a mapping node, or we can bring the screenshot into Photo P or Photoshop and we can use the free transform tool just to align it with the screen. Then we can just save out that image and swap it for the original screenshot and that gets rid of any of the weird stretching. So now we've got a basic phone set up, let's try something a little bit more complex. We're going to add some sort of scrolling app like Twitter. To do this, you're going to need a really long seamless screenshot from an app like this. You can just make one yourself by piecing together loads of images in a photo editor or if you have a modern smartphone, you can probably take a scrolling screenshot. So if we take a look at this image, you can see that it's also stretched. We can align that using photo P like we did with the background shot, but I'm just gonna use a mapping node. We're gonna to need to add a mapping node anyway, so there's no reason not to. Once again, we're gonna use node wrangler, select the image and just press Control T to automatically add the mapping. Then I'm just going to play with the scale and the location values until everything looks about right. Mine's a little bit squashed here because the Twitter icons should be perfect circles. Spend a little bit more time on this than I did. So now we need a way to transition from the original phone background to Twitter and we need to make sure that the frames are always on top. Select our original MixRGB node and duplicate it with Shift D. Connect it between the screenshot image and the first mix node. Then plug the Twitter screenshot into the free slot. If we change the mix factor, it should transition between the screenshot and the background. Now all of these nodes are going to get very messy very soon, especially if you want to add loads of different apps to the phone. To make our life a little bit easier, we can put everything into a node group. Select all the nodes apart from the material output, then press Ctrl and G. Everything's going to go green, that means you're now inside a node group. You can toggle in and out of a node group just by pressing tab. 
While we're in this view, if you wish, you can rename the group phone control or something. At the moment, the group's no good to us because it has no external controls. So press tab and go back into the node group. Press N to bring up the shader options and then go to the section called group. If you look to the left of our shader workspace now, you'll see there's a new node there called group input. This helps us to make controls for our phone. Grab the output of that node and connect it to the emission strength. In the group menu that we just opened by pressing N, set the maximum value to 1.5, the minimum to zero. If you hit tab to go back out of the node group, you'll notice that the group now has an exposed slider. That gives us access to the screen brightness. You can turn off the screen or turn it all the way up. And the maximum value will never go above 1.5 because that's what we set as the maximum. You can go back into the settings for this and rename it phone on off switch. The second mix RGB node that we made for the Twitter screenshot has nothing plugged into the factor. Connect the group input to that factor. In the group settings, you can rename this Twitter on off. Press tab to check that it's working. If you move this slider, it should now transition between the two screenshots, just like moving the factor of the mix node. If your screen's black at the moment, by the way, it means you need to turn the brightness up first. Obviously you can't transition between apps when the phone is off. The Twitter screenshots already got a mapping node connected to it that we used to fix all the stretching. If we connect its location input to the group input node, we can move the Z value and it'll do nothing. But if we move the X value, it's going to move the Twitter screenshot up and down and it's going to make it look like someone's scrolling the phone. So making an app like Twitter is fairly simple because the entire interface moves at once. But what if there's parts of the interface that don't move, say on Google Maps? Well, that's actually fairly simple as well. To make that, you're just gonna need two things. You're gonna need an image, which is a screenshot of the interface that doesn't move. You can make that quite simply just by cutting it out in Photoshop or PhotoP or whatever. And you're gonna need a screenshot as well that's gonna go underneath this overlay and that'll be able to be moved around separately. So just like we did with the black frame before, essentially we're going to place one image on top of the other and they're both going to be independent of each other. Duplicate one of the mix RGB nodes and place it just after the screen background image. Connect the Google map overlay image to the bottom slot, then use a mapping node to correct the aspect ratio so that it all fits nicely. Duplicate one more mix RGB node and connect it between the previous mix node and the map overlay. Move the overlay down to the bottom slot, then drag the screenshot of Google Maps into the workspace and connect that up to the top slot. Plug the alpha of the map overlay into the factor of the mix node. Now we have something that looks like Google Maps. We can change the first mix node value to turn it on or off, and we can plug a group input into this factor and rename that map control. Give the Google Maps screenshot its own mapping node. Just like we did with Twitter earlier on, we're gonna connect the group input to the location of the mapping node. So now we can change those values and scroll around the map. We can also connect one up to the scale value and that's gonna let us zoom in and out. Once all our controls are in place, it's really easy to start animating by adding keyframes to the settings so that the sliders change over time. One of the best things about this is the fact that you can have a character actually interacting with the screen and you don't need to work out the animation for the screen beforehand, you can just animate the character and animate the screen at the same time. This tutorial was actually based on a little experiment that I threw up on Twitter about a month ago. Everybody really liked it and I had a lot of requests to see how it was done. A lot of this stuff never makes it to YouTube, so if you want to see more stuff like this that I create, I suggest you follow me on Twitter. Thanks very much for watching this tutorial and thanks again to Squarespace for making it possible. Remember to visit squarespace.com forward slash decoder to start your free trial. Use the offer code decoded to save 10% on a domain name registration or your first website.